Hello everyone. Welcome to this exciting course on Sketch. This course is completely free thanks to Sketch for sponsoring this video. Sketch is a digital design tool that allows you to bring your creative ideas to life. Whether you're designing a website, mobile app, or illustrations, Sketch provides you with a comprehensive set of tools and features to help you achieve your design goals. In this course, we'll dive into the world of Sketch and explore its various capabilities. We'll start by covering the basics of the interface and how to use the various tools. Then we'll move on to more advanced topics such as creating reusable components, working with symbols, prototyping and many more. Whether you're new to Sketch or have some experience, this course will help you improve your design skills and take your work to the next level. So get ready to roll up your sleeves, create an account, download the Mac app, and let's get started. So we will design this beautiful UI, and the fun part is that we will adapt this iOS design for Android and for desktop using the same components. With so many incredible tools available, it can be challenging to find the right one. I will guide you through its features. Primarily used by web and app designers, Sketch provides features like vector editing, prototyping, and collaboration tools, which makes it popular among UX and UI designers. Let's talk about the improvements in Sketch. Annotations are a great way to collaborate on a design. You can share comments and discuss details. Click on the chat icon next to the play button. You can reply to add more details or discuss with others by mentioning them inside that same annotation. Get a head start on your next project. From the workspace window, select templates. Sketch has added various and free customizable templates, including presentations, social posts, business cards, and many more that are ready to use. Another great improvement is that you can now open Figma file in Sketch. You can open a local document, or by dragging and dropping into Sketch, the process will be handled automatically. Smart Layout has improved directionality. It allows you to create layout grids, a set of horizontal and vertical lines that defines the structure of your design. Once a layout grid is set up, you can align and distribute elements within it, and the grid will automatically adapt to different screen sizes and orientations. You can now set a spacing value for multiple layers without having to click on Tidy first. The most valuable feature of Smart Distribute is the ability to swap specific layer position in your selection without to manually move layers and check for space inconsistency. Just select, click, and drag. What's interesting about shapes is that we can create beautiful patterns using shapes and rotate copies. In this example, I added various ovals, turned them into a single layer using Union. You can create beautiful effect with the Rotate Copies tool and also add gradient colors. Finally, make your design process faster and easier. Built by the developers from the community, Sketch provides assistance, plugins, and integrations. Are you excited to get started? Let's jump into the design. This section will cover the topics of fonts, icons, and shapes. We're going to design our first screen, the music player. We will focus on how to insert icons, how to create the circular volume controller with gap and dash, how to use the mask tool, how to create the audio wave, and finally, how to create a custom shape. Fonts play an important role in design and communication. Different font styles can evoke different emotions and affect the overall tone of the text. An appropriate font can improve readability and make the text more accessible. Fonts can add visual interest and aesthetic appeal to a design. Consistent use of a specific font can help to establish brand identity. You can add a custom font to Sketch by installing it on your Mac and selecting it in the Sketch Text Styles menu. It also supports Google Fonts. The default font for iOS is San Francisco from Apple. I'm going to use a different one, which is Nianito from Google Fonts. Icons provides visual clarity to quickly and effectively convey a message or idea without requiring written text. They take up less space, making them useful in compact interfaces such as mobile devices. Icons may make interfaces more intuitive and easier to use by reducing the need for written instructions. They add visual interest and aesthetic appeal to a design. Google also has delightful and beautifully crafted icons for everyday actions and items. Also, you'll find everything you need in Sketch app sources, like the Eva icons that we're going to use. 
Now let's go into practice mode. Let's open a new document. Click on the plus icon at the top left to insert an artboard. Under Apple devices, select iPhone 13 Pro. Add the following color on the screen. Now click on the plus icon and search for status bar. Select the dark mode for iPhone. The X and Y position will be zero. We will now create the background effect. Insert an oval shape. By holding shift while you drag, it will keep its proportions. The size will be 300. Add a linear gradient. The first and second colors will be on the screen. Reduce the gradient's opacity to 50%. Duplicate the circle. And change the colors for the following. Move the second circle around here. And duplicate it again. But change the linear gradient to a solid color. We will now add a blur effect. So draw a rectangle with the same size as your device. So 390 by 844. For this rectangle, remove the fill color and the border as well. On the blur section, click on the plus and select background blur. So with that effect, everything behind that layer will be blurred. You can adjust the intensity of the blur and saturation. For the saturation put at 0% and the blur at 50. Now select the rectangle and the three ovals and group them. The keyboard shortcut is Command plus G. Or you can right click and select group selection. Rename it to be G. Now it's time to add your favorite singer. For my design, I would choose Ariana Grande. As you can see, the photo is too big. So press Command plus K to activate the scale layers. Resize it smaller to fit inside your artboard. Now, we will add an oval as a mask. Press on O, and the size will be 300 by 300. Drag the photo layer on top, and also select the shape. And we will add a mask selection. A new group have been created, so rename it to Avatar. As you can see, the masking shape will only reveal a specific area of the image inside it. Now select Mask, duplicate it, and rename it to Outline. The size will be 330 by 330. What I like about Sketch is that it's very easy to center everything with the help of the red lines or guides. Remove the border and the fill color will be white with an opacity of 20%. Duplicate the outline layer one more time. Resize it to 376 and center it. The opacity will be 5%. To be more organized, select the two outlines, group them, and rename it to Outline. Select the image and the mask, group them, and rename it to Artist. Now, we will learn a new technique. We will create the volume controller. Press on O to add an oval. The size will be 340. Remove the fill color, and change the border color with the following one. Select Center and the width will be 10. For dash, enter 530. And for the gap, 640. And select the curved end. Duplicate the same oval, and change the color to this one. The dash will be 180, and the gap 900. Grip both ovals, and bring inside the frame, and position it like this, to fit the side of the biggest oval. Add another oval. The size will be 20. Add a linear gradient with the following colors. Add a white border. Rename the layer to setting volume. Drag it inside the group and rename it to volume controller. Make sure to put the status bar on top of everything. Select volume controller and avatar and move it down. Now, at the top center, you will find a square icon which is for symbols. It will display all the libraries that you have installed. 
I've installed either icons, but you can use any one. I'm going to select arrow down icon and change the color to white. I will also need a more icon. So I will select the three dots. Now I will place each icon inside a container of 44 by 44. Remove the fill color. Select the rectangle and the more symbol. Group them and rename it more. The more icon is now inside a container. So the spacing will start from the frame. For the user interface, when you press on it, it has to fit the size of a finger. For example, this size is 24 by 24, so the space is a little bit too small for a finger. So repeat the same steps for this icon and rename it arrow down. Now let's add a text between the two icons, so press on T. The font is Unito, bold, and the size 20. The text will be now play. Go to alignment, select auto width, and left alignment. And click on horizontal center for your text. Drag the more icon until you see the red guide to align with your text. And repeat for the arrow down. The spacing on the left will be 24. You can press on option on your keyboard to see the spacing. The spacing on the right will also be 24. Select the two icons and the text, group them, and rename it to Top Navigation. The spacing from the status bar will be 16. Select the avatar, and the spacing will be 48. We will now add a play button. Add an oval of 50 by 50. And add a linear gradient with the following colors. Reduce the gradient's opacity to 40. Add a background blur of 20. Add a white stroke. And reduce the opacity to 20. Make sure to center the oval with the red guides. Now go to your library and add a play icon. Place it on top of the oval, group them, and rename it to play button. Change the icon color to white. Now we will need four more icons. The shuffle, the repeat, the backward, and the forward. For each icon, you will do the same steps as the one from the top navigation, meaning that it will be inside a container of 44 by 44. With that done, you can position the icon like my design. For the shuffle icon, the X position is 48, and the Y position is 471. For the backward icon, the X position is 108 and the Y position is 523. For the forward icon, the X position is 238, and the Y position 523. And lastly, for the repeat icon, the X position is 298, and the Y position 471. With the icons position, select all four icons and the play button, group them together, and rename it to music player. Now we will create the song's details section. The first text will be the song title. Select medium. With a size of 17. The color will be white. With an opacity of 87. Select auto width with a left alignment. And align your layer to horizontal center. Duplicate the text. The spacing will be 4. This text will be the name of your artist. The size will be 15. And regular. Reduce the opacity to 60. And also align to horizontal center. Select both texts and the spacing will be 32 from the music player. Now let's create the audio wave. On this shape, we will use line. The keyboard shortcut is L. Set a width of 3 and select the curved end. Duplicate the line four more time and add a random height for each one. Select all the lines and duplicate the group a few times to fill the screen. Now select all the lines. Click on tidy. This will evenly space everything. You can also adjust the value of the spacing. Send to your audio wave. You can now edit randomly the height of each line. Select all the lines and click on tidy one more time. 
with everything still selected. Click on Combine Multiple Shape Layer, located at the top right. This will merge everything together and turn into one layer only. Now select the new layer and add a linear gradient. For the first color, use the following one. Add the following color in the middle. And the last color will be white with an opacity of around 20%. I will place the second and third colors as follows. This will give the effect of a progress bar for the song with the gray section representing the remaining portion of the song. Now let's add some duration. The left will be the time of the song played and the right one is the time remaining of the song. So type 2 minutes. Color white at 60% opacity. Choose regular. Size 15. Auto width. And left alignment. Duplicate. And add a minus duration for the time remaining. Before we continue, I just want to fix the top, left and right spacing of my top navigation. Add a spacing of 8 from the status bar. Ungroup your top navigation. Move your left icon until you have a spacing of 16. Do the same thing for the right icon and group everything back together. With the spacing fixed, we can now align our duration. We will use the roller. The shortcut is Option plus R. Or click on the View tab, select Canvas, and Show Rulers. Drag a first guide from the ruler to the left edge of the top navigation. Repeat the same steps for the right edge. Now align both duration inside the guides. If you see the guides, that means it is aligned towards the layer it is pointing to. We will then edit our audio wave to make it fit. Select both duration and change the font size to 11. Now adjust the alignment again and align the width with the center of the text. Select the three elements, group them, and rename it Audio Wave. Now we will create a custom shape for the lyric button. Draw a rectangle with the same width as your frame, and remove the border. Add a linear gradient with the following two colors. The border will be white, center, with an opacity of 46, and choose the blend mode to overlay. Now it's time to customize our shape. Click on edit the selected layer icon. Add a new point at the middle of the rectangle. Use the guide to align it. Select the top left corner and drag it to the bottom. Do the same thing for the top right corner. Add two more points as follows. Now we will curve the middle corner for the point type. If you select straight, it will be easy and simple, as you just need to enter a value for the radius. If you select mirror, you will have more flexibility, as you can control the handles. For my design, I will choose straight with a value of 100. Now bring this point towards the bottom and do the same thing for the other side since we added those two points manually. They can be tricky to make them symmetrical. Here's a simple trick you can use with some calculations. We have our first and fixed guide at 16. Bring a new guide to align with the first point. The position is 112. So 112 minus 16 is equal to 96. This will be the distance reference. The second fixed guide is at 374. So 374 minus 96 is equal to 278. Drag a new guide at that position. Now just drag the second point to align with the new guide. To finalize the shape, add a straight point type with a radius of 100 for both points. Now you can notice that the frame doesn't hug the edges of my shape. To fix that, click on the edit icon at the top right and select flatten. 
Now you see that the frame dimension has changed and the space has disappeared. Also, it is a good practice to have round numbers and remove the decimals. For the height, I will modify it slightly to 69. And I will lower my shape to have this effect. Now we will add an arrow up icon. This will tell the user that if you tap on it, it will bring up a sheet or model for the lyrics. Center it. And the color will be white at 60% opacity. Add a text and type lyrics. Select auto width. The font size will be 11. And it will be an uppercase. The spacing from the bottom is 8. And between the icon is 4. Select the icon, the text, and the shape. Group them. And rename it to lyrics button. I will organize my layers as follows. Select the song infos, music player, volume controller, avatar, and move them up. Leave a spacing of 24 from the top navigation. Move the audio wave up and add a spacing of 48 from the lyrics button. And voila, we are done with our first screen. You can always modify the gradient's position or the background's ovals. Now this part is optional, but I want to add a little bit more color to my design. Duplicate the mask from the avatar. Add a linear gradient with the following colors. Add a Gaussian blur with a value of 50. Now this will add a nice glowing effect to my avatar. We are now done with the first screen. Next, we're going to create various layouts using the Smart Layout to create a responsive design. In this section, we will cover the basics of Smart Layout and constraints. You will learn how to create responsive and flexible layouts that adjust to different sizes while maintaining a consistent look and feel. With Smart Layout, you can optimize your symbol and turn them into responsive component that automatically resize to fit the content. So I have my symbol here, and I want to change the action to send a message instead. You can see that the text is not fitting in the content. Instead of manual resizing, let Smart Layout take care of it. I'm going to restart it. Go to the Symbol Master. Click on Edit Source. Go to Layout section. By default, it is set to None. Click on Horizontal, and select Resize Symbol from the left to right. Now let's test it out. And it's resizing to the length of the text. For this example, this button is not a symbol yet. To create one, click on this icon. Convert layers into a reusable symbol. When you turn it into a symbol, you have the option to select the type of layout. Again, I will select left to right layout. This is exactly the same thing I did on my first example. So let's test it out. To manually resize a symbol instance, detach it or remove the Smart Layout properties from the symbol source. When you resize an artboard, you can control how its layers respond. You can choose to keep everything in place at its original size or resize all the content. Additionally, you can use resizing constraints applied directly to the layers to control their behavior further. As you can see, when I resize the artboard, the content is not moving. If you check the option, Adjust Content on Resize, the content will adjust to the size of the artboard. If you want the elements to stay in place, like the text and the buttons, you can pin them. Select the text on Pin to Edge, click on Left and Top, and Fix Size, Vertical and Horizontal. For the Play button, pin to the left, and for the Shuffle button, pin to the right. Now when you resize your artboard, it will keep the same proportions. Resizing constraints in the inspector allows you to control how layers behave when the artboard, group, or symbol they're part of is resized. It ensures that the contents maintain their shape and proportion when scaled. It's useful when designing for multiple device sizes or desktops. The available resizing constraints options are pin to edge, fix size, and preview. Pin to edge allow you to choose the edges of a parent 
on which your layer will be pinned when resizing. Click on the edges you want to activate. Fixed size lets you determine whether a layer's height and width should stretch or stay at a fixed size when the parent is resized. Preview shows how the controls you select affect your layer's behavior. Creating a button is an essential part of designing user interfaces. A button allows users to interact with your application by triggering an action when clicked or tapped. Now let's create a button. Press on R to draw a rectangle. The size is 106 by 44. Add a play icon. Place the icon inside a container of 44 by 44. And center it. Remove fill and border. Group the icon and the container and rename it to play. Drag it inside the rectangle. Add a text and type play. Select auto width. And the size will be 16. Align it horizontally. And the spacing will be 8. Select everything and rename it to play button. Add a corner radius of 20. And change the fill color to black with 50% opacity. Add a border with a linear gradient. The top color will be white at 30% opacity. The bottom color will be black at also 30%. Place as follows. This will create an effect of a highlight. Change the icon color to white with 87% opacity. Add a background blur of 10 for now. Now we will create our card. Add a rectangle of 359 by 280. Pick corners of 30. Add an image as a fill. This image is taken from Unsplash. Add a border with a linear gradient. It will be exactly the same gradient as the button we just created. The width will be 2 and select center. Drag the button inside the card. Select the base of your icon. Add the blending mode overlay. And change the background blur to 5. Now convert your button into a symbol and select left to right layout. Now duplicate your button. Change the text to shuffle and add a shuffle icon. The spacing be 32 from the left and bottom. And it will also be 32 from the right and bottom. Now we will add a hero title for my card. The size will be 32. Choose bold. And auto height. The spacing will be 32 from the top and the left. Group everything. And rename it to top card. We are done with our first layout. For the second layout, add a rectangle. The size will be 145 by 130. The radius will be 20. Add a fill color black with overlay. Reduce the opacity to 40%. Add a border with linear gradient. The top color is white. And the bottom color is black. Place it in diagonal. Both will have 10% opacity. Add another rectangle with a size of 129 by 88. The radius will be 12. So the spacing will be 8 from the top, left, and right. Remove the border and replace the fill color by an image. You can take your own or use one from Unsplash. Add a text. The size is 15. Choose auto width with left alignment. The color will be white with 82% opacity. The spacing will be 8 from each side. But I noticed that my first rectangle had the wrong height, so change it to 132, so we can have a perfect spacing of 8 from each side. Group everything and rename it to medium layout. Now we will duplicate that layout and create a new one. For the resizing to work, you will to drag the layout inside a layout, or else it won't work. So if we resize the width, all the elements inside will move, and we don't want that. If we click on fixed size, the element stays in place. But the spacing changes and we don't want that either. To fix that, on pin to edge, we will select left, top, and right. That will ensure that the spacing doesn't change. For the text, pin to left and bottom. Now it should work and resize the width to 168. And the height to 160. 
duplicate the text and we will fix the spacing. So I notice that the height will be 162 and not 160. The bottom spacing will be 8. The first text will be the song title. The second one will be the artist. So change the size to 13 and opacity to 60%. The spacing between the text will be 0. Now I notice that the top spacing is only 7 to make it fit. We will change the height of the illustration to 100 instead. Now we should have a consistent spacing of 8 everywhere. I will now add my play icon from the music player. So just copy and paste it. Change the color to white instead at 50% opacity and blending mode to overlay. For the last layout, we will create a small one. Delete the illustration and the play button. The text will be only the artist's name. Change the width to 90. Add an avatar. So insert an oval of 80 by 80. The spacing will be 5 everywhere. Then move the border and fill it with an image. Center the text. The top spacing will be 8. The bottom spacing will also be 8. So reduce the height to 121. I will change the corners to 16. Make sure that the oval is inside the group. Since we will turn those layouts into symbols, we will need to rename each layers properly. So I will fast forward this step. Now that we are done with our three layouts, Let's move on to the next section. We will explore color variable and text styles. In this section, we will learn how to create and use color variables, color and text styles in your projects. This guide will provide valuable information and tips on getting the most out of these powerful design tools. We will also design the playlist screen for our music app. First, let's talk about color variable. A color variable is a value that can be assigned to a color to use across a design. It allows for easier color management and consistency throughout your design. The color variable can be edited and it will automatically update all instances of that color in your design. This will keep the design consistent, especially if the color schema changes. In my design, I have two main colors, the purple and cyan colors. I will be using these two colors a lot. So select the cyan and click on create color variable. I will rename to main color slash neon blue. The color was already created, but I wanted to show it from scratch. If you click on edit variable, the changes will instantly show to your design. Since my purple color was in a gradient, you will not be able to create the variable. So you can create an oval and paste your color on it. Now the option to create will be available. I will rename it to main slash neon purple. Now the color have been added to main color. If you have a gradient, you can also save it. Select your gradient and click on the plus icon Add Preset. To delete or rename the gradient, just select it and right click. A color variable allows you to store and reuse a specific color value throughout your design. By creating and saving a color style, you can define a color once and apply it to multiple objects or layers in your design, making it easier to manage and maintain consistency in your color choices. So I've already separated and created my colors that will be used in my design. By downloading my file, you will have access to the same colors. To create a color style, select it and click on Create. Rename your style and press Enter. To use it, just select the shape you want to add color. I am selecting my Play button. Click on Create, select from this document, and choose the style that you want, in this case, Gradient BG1. It is as simple as that. With organized color styles, your design process will be a lot faster. Text styles allows you to save and apply consistent text formatting in your designs. It will enable to set text properties such as font, size, color, letter spacing, line height, and more and apply them across multiple text layers in a sketch document. By creating and using text styles, you can ensure that your text is consistent, making it easier to make changes and updates later on. 
so I created three different styles using the same component for iOS, Android, and desktop. I have to create a style for each type of device. As you can notice, depending on the devices, some font size are not the same. You have to follow the typography rules for each type. This is why text styles is very important, so you can be consistent. If you follow my design, this section is the hero. This is the title. Then here we have body 1, body 2, and body 3. This is button 1. And finally, button 2. Now let's take the desktop as an example. I will show you how to create a text style. Select Hero, click on Create. I will rename it to Desktop slash Dark slash Hero. The style will keep the format properties that was applied to this text. You can repeat the same steps for other types. It's important to have an organized and clear naming convention. Now I have duplicated the three devices, so I can convert it to light mode. Make sure to rename everything properly. So let's create the light mode style for Hero. Since we've duplicated from the dark version, it was already created but with the dark properties. To edit it, click on Detach and Create. Now rename it to iOS slash light slash Hero. To apply a text style, it is similar to the color style. Select the text. And under Appearance, click on No Text Style, then on Create, and on from this document, select the style that you want. Now let's create our playlist screen. Duplicate the music player, delete everything except the status bar and the top navigation, but we will modify it. Delete the More icon, the spacing will be 8. Since we created this icon manually, let's convert it to a symbol. Change the icon to arrow left, the color is white, and align the text with the center of the icon. Now bring the top card we have created inside the frame. Align center, and the spacing will be 24. Now for the bottom part, you can copy and paste the blurred effect from the avatar. I will just hide the middle oval to create another effect. Add a rectangle, the size will be 390 by 395. Align it to the bottom. The top corners will be 30. The fill color is white at 10% opacity and overlay. Add border with linear gradient. Both colors would be white. First one at 100%. Blending mode overlay. And second one at 0%. Bring the bottom point around here. This will create this nice effect. Now let's add a text. Type Featuring, select Auto Width, and Left Alignment. The text style will be iOS Dark Subtitle. The top and left spacing will be 24. Now we will create a row for the sun. Add a rectangle of 390 by 70. Remove the border. Add another rectangle of 50 by 50. Remove the border. Fill it with an image. The corners will be 10. The left spacing will be 16. I made a mistake. My subtitle will also be 16. Add another text. This will be the song's title. Select Auto Width. The text style is Body 1. Duplicate the text. Group everything and rename it to List 1. The second text will be Body 2. The spacing will be 8 from the image. The spacing between the two texts is 0. And align it to the center of the image. We need a more icon, but you can just copy and paste the one we created previously. The spacing to the right will be 16. We will add a separator. So use a rectangle. The width will be 359. Remove fill. The border will be black at 20% opacity. Rename the layers properly. The spacing from the subtitle will be 8. Turn your list into a symbol. Finally, duplicate it 4 more times. The spacing between the lists will be 0. 
We are now done with the playlist screen. On the next section, we will explore components and tint. In this section, you will learn about components and tints. We're going to design the home page. A component is a reusable design element used throughout a project. Under the components tab in the sidebar, you can access various views for your document's design elements. These views help navigate your design systems libraries or examine local components in your design. Symbols can help speed up your workflow by allowing you to save and reuse common design elements. Making changes to a symbol will automatically update all instances of that symbol throughout your designs. So, we created various size of layouts. Now it's time to turn them into symbols. Select the first layout. Click on Create Symbol in the toolbar. Give your symbol a name. I'm going to select Horizontal Center. No matter how long the text is, it will expand from the center. Do the same process with the medium layout using the left to right layout. The large layout will also have the left to right layout. Repeat the same process for the light layouts. I will also create a light mode version for my top card. Add a white color on top of the image and reduce the opacity to 10%. Now turn these two cards into symbols. A nested symbol is a symbol within another symbol, allowing multiple instances of a symbol to be nested within another symbol. This top card is a symbol. Within that card, there are other symbols such as button, icon, and text. These nested symbols can also be edited and updated while maintaining their relationship to the parent symbol. The Override section in the Design tab of the Inspector allows for customization of consistent design elements by editing symbol instances without changing the source or affecting other instances. You can easily edit by selecting a symbol with an instance. The Override section of the Inspector displays all the customizable options, including colors, text values, text styles, layer styles, images, vested symbols, and the hotspots they contain. Tint allows you to change the color of an image or shape defined as a symbol. Applying a tint to a symbol changes the color of all instances of that symbol throughout your design. It helps create symbol variations or quickly update your design's color scheme. Tint allows you to create variations of a symbol without creating separate symbols for each variation, saving time and keeping the design consistent. Tint can be applied to any symbol that contains a fill border, or text color. Let's jump into the design. The layouts are ready to use, so we're simply inserting them into the artboard and creating the tab bar. Duplicate the music player artboard. Rename it to home page. Delete everything except the status bar, top navigation, and the BG group. Hide the BG group layer for the moment. Select the top navigation. Delete the two icons. Select the title, ungroup it. Change it to discover. Select the text style iOS dark title. Spacing is 16 from the left. Add an angle of 44 by 44. Remove the border. Fill it with an image. I am using sketch data and faces. Group the two elements. And name it top navigation. Left and right spacing will be 16. And the spacing from the top is 8. Now it's time to add the components we have created. Add the small layout. We will create categories. So add a text. Type favorite artists. The text style is subtitle. Auto width. The spacing from the top navigation is 24 and 16 from the left. The small layout will have a spacing of 16 from the text. Duplicate it three more times. Select all four layouts. Click on tidy. The spacing will be 16. Group them. Rename to Favorite Artists. Duplicate the text. The spacing will be 24. Change it to Trending Music. Insert the large layout component. Left and top spacing will be 16. Duplicate one time. Spacing between is 16. Duplicate the text again. 
and the spacing is 24. 34. Select the trending music elements, group them, and rename trending music. The new text is recommended for you. Insert the medium layout. Duplicate two more times. Select the three layouts and click on Tidy. Spacing will be 16. Group them and rename recommended for you. Duplicate the group. The spacing will be 24. Change the title to Recently Play. Now you can change the text and images from the Override section. Let's create the tab bar. Add a rectangle of 390 by 90. We will need a home indicator for iPhone. To help me, I will insert a guide here. I will need the following icons. Add another rectangle of 48 by 44. Remove the border. Insert the icon inside. And add text. Type listen. The text style is body tree. Send to the icon and text. Group them and rename to tab 1. Remove the fill of the base. Both elements will be white. At 87% opacity, convert tab 1 into a symbol. Duplicate 4 more times and replace the text and icon. Don't worry about the one in the middle. We will fix it after. The left and right spacing is 15. The spacing between is 27. If the text is not center, select tab 1. Click Edit Source and select Layout, Horizontal Center. Drag the tab bar inside your frame. Align it to the bottom. The fill color is black at 20%. And add overlay. Add a background blur of 30 and saturation of 50. Add a border with linear gradient. Top color is white at 100%. Bottom color is black at 0%. Add overlay, it will be inside. The spacing are the following, and the space between is 28 instead of 27. Select the five tabs, group it and rename tabs. Now select tabs, the home indicator, and the base, group them, and rename tab bar. Now we will work on the middle icon, it will be a custom one. We can edit the symbol, or else it will modify the others. So add two guides like this. Hide the middle icon. Add an oval of 36 by 36. Add a linear gradient. Duplicate it. The size will be 50 by 50. The opacity will be 40%. Duplicate a third oval. The size is 64 by 64. With an opacity of 10%. Drag the icon in the middle. The color will be white. Group everything. Rename it to radio. Make sure to drag it inside tab bar. Align it center with the top of the tab bar. Duplicate the tab bar to the playlist screen. We will add one more element. It will be a bar that displays the current song. Add a rectangle of 390 by 70. Make sure it is below the tab bar. Fill color is black. Add overlay. And 20% opacity. Add a border with linear gradient. Top color is white at 100%. Bottom is black at 0%. Add overlay. Add background blur. The top corners will be 10. Place the gradient as follows. Add another rectangle of 44 by 44. Remove border. Fill with image. The corners will be 6. The spacing from the left is 16. Top and bottom 13. Add a text. Select body 2. This will be the name of the artist. Select Auto Width. The spacing is 8. Duplicate the text. First text is Body. The spacing between the text is 0. Center it with the image. Now we can copy the back icon. Copy it 2 times. Spacing between is 0, and from the right is 16. Replace the icons. Group the following layers, and rename it to current player. We will finalize the screen with the last element. 
it will be a line that shows the progress of the song. Draw a line. The width will be 2. Add a gradient. Place it as follows. We are now done with iOS screens. On the next section, we will create an Android design using the same components and explore libraries and developer handoff. In this section, we will explore libraries, real-time collaboration, and developer handoff. Also, we are going to turn our iOS design into Android using the same components and make it in light mode. Developer handoff is a feature. That allows designer to share design specifications and assets. It generates code snippets, CSS, and design specs, such as measurements and colors, making it easier for developers. Designers can share the sketch file with developers by sharing a link. Click on this icon and copy link. Paste the link to your browser. Select the design and click on the Inspect tab at the top right. Developers will be able to copy CSS and also download the assets. If you want more details on a frame, select it and right click. You will find all the layers. On this page, I have all my symbols. You can inspect each symbols. Right click and select Inspect Artboard. This is the symbol. You can copy to clipboard by clicking on it. You can also have measurements. This is very useful. Select an element inside your artboard. Then hover over another to display the relative distances between them. If you want to copy a layer's attributes, select an element and hover over an attribute and click Copy to Clipboard. Getting infos on a gradient have never been easier. Click on it. It will display this pop-up. You can copy a single color or copy all. Make sure to display them in hex colors. Copying a text style is the same process. Just hover on it and click Copy. You can also copy text from the content section. You can export color variables into color token. Click on export color tokens. Select US CSS. Before you can copy the link, you have to select enable for latest document update. Then the copy link will be available. Libraries are sketch documents with components such as symbols, text styles, color variables, layer styles, and artboard templates that you can share with your entire team, helping to ensure consistency and streamline the design process. You can quickly insert common components, like the Apple iOS UI element. When you download a new library, you have to open the Preferences settings. Under the Libraries tab, you can enable or disable a library. You can also automatically download new updates. To add a library, click on Add Local Library. With real-time collaboration, you can work together on the same document. See everyone's changes instantly. If someone is in the same project, you will see an arrow with the user's name moving in the canvas. You will never have to wonder whether you're editing the correct version of a document again. Now let's get into our Android design. Add an artboard. Under Android Devices, select Google Pixel 6. Add a background color. We're going to insert symbol instance into the canvas by clicking on the diamond icon at the top menu. Under from this document and search for small layout light. Duplicate three more. Select all, click on tidy and the spacing between is 16 and 16 from the left. Insert two large layout light and three medium layout. Add a text, type favorite artists, select auto width. The style is subtitle. The spacing for all the subtitles will be 16 from the left and 16 from the cards. Duplicate the subtitle and change it to trending music. Duplicate again and change to recommended for you. This part, I will just organize my sections better by grouping and renaming them. At the top, type Discover. The style will be Title. 
don't forget to select auto width. Again, the spacing is 16 from left and bottom. Add the Android status bar. Now we will add the avatar. Add an oval of 44 by 44. Spacing is 16 from the right. Make sure to align with the title. Group them and rename to top navigation. Remove the border and add a random image from faces. Add the tab bar. Now I just realized the mistake, so I will change the spacing between subtitle and cards to 8 instead. Select all the sections, and the spacing between will be 16. Now let's move on to the playlist screen. You can duplicate and delete everything except the status bar or insert the Pixel 6 artboard and the status bar. Add a rectangle of 44 by 44. Insert an arrow left icon. Group them and rename arrow back. Remove the fill color. Add a text type playlist. Select auto width. The style is title. Spacing between will be 8. Group the icon and text. Rename to top navigation. The spacing on the top navigation will be 16 from the left and 8 from the status bar. Insert the top card. Resize the width to have a spacing of 16 from left and right. Add a rectangle of 360 by 396. The top corners will be 30. The field color is white at 20% opacity. Similar to the iOS design, I will add a blurred background with circles, so this section will be quick. You can also customize your own sizes and colors. Add a first circle with a gradient color. My second circle will have a purple color. On the rectangle, my background blur will be 50. You can play with the opacity on the two circles to make it lighter. Add border with linear gradient. Top color is white at 100. And bottom color is black at 100. Add overlay. On the rectangle, you can add the following shadow. The color is black, x is 0, y is minus 10, and blur 40. Add the list layout. Resize the width to 360. Change the tint to black. Duplicate 4 more times. Select the five lists, click on tidy, and the space between is zero. Add a text, type featuring. The text style is subtitle. Select the text and the five lists. Add spacing between a bay instead, and the top spacing will be 24. Align your subtitle to have a left spacing of 16. I just noticed that we have to insert bottom app bar instead. Now we will create our last screen. Duplicate the playlist frame. Delete everything, but keep the status bar. Add avatar. Center it vertically. Add the music player. Add the audio wave. Resize the width to have a spacing of 16 on each side. Add the lyric button. Add the song title. The style is body one. Duplicate and add the artist. Use body two. Make sure to center everything. The spacing between is zero. The spacing between music player and text is 32 and 53 from the audio wave. We are done with the Android version. As you can see, it is very efficient when all the components are set up. In the next section, we will explore annotations. In this section, we will have an overview of all the new features and changes Sketch have brought. Also, we're going to design this beautiful desktop using the components that I created for you. I am very excited to announce a new addition to Sketch annotations. As always, you can thread discussions, add an emoji, and use Markdown. Annotations are a great way to collaborate on a design. You can share comments and discuss details in the context of your design. Better yet, you can create, comment, and reply. 
to add an annotation. Press and then click on the point on canvas where you want your annotation to appear. Or click the new comment button in the top right toolbar. So I am in my coworker document and I want to leave her a comment. Her UI design is so beautiful. I love the colors and the layout. I can give her the comment. Beautiful layouts. You can add emoji. And you can invite someone into the discussion by mentioning them. Select the user and click on send. They will receive a notification. So we can multiply conversations in just one place. In the web, you will see a circle. Click on it and you will see all the comments. You can preview them in the comments section. If you don't want to receive notifications, just click on the more icon and click on following. If you want to get notified on a new comment, you have to click again. And if you want to delete a comment, just click on delete. If you want to invite someone in the discussion, you have to copy link and share it. Templates are a great way to start a new project. Rather than starting with a blank canvas, you can start with a document that includes content inside. Just double click and a new document will open. Just give it a name and start editing on the new document. You can also turn any of your own document into template, which will make them available for anyone in your workspace. Let's say I've created this template and I want to share it. To turn a workspace document into a template, go to File, then Document Settings. You can choose Document, Library, and Template. Click on Template. Go to the Workspace document and click on the template. You can see that it is saved in the Template section. You can now open Figma file in Sketch. Go to File, Open Local Document. Search for your Fig file. The process will be handled automatically. Now let's jump into the design. Press on A. Go to the Web category and select Medium. Add a background color. This is the color. We will finalize the color later. Press on R. We're going to create a rectangle for the side menu. The size is 252 by 1080. Fill with the color black. Reduce the opacity to 20%. Duplicate the rectangle. Reduce the width size to 80. I'm going to show you how to insert symbol instances into the canvas. Click on the diamond icon. Go to from this document. Search for browser desktop. Place it at the top. The spacing is 12 from each side. Again, go to symbol. Search category layout. The spacing is 20 from each side and 56 from the top. Now, search for side menu layout. Place it at the bottom of the library layout. Duplicate slide more. Click on tidy. Then, click to align left. The spacing is 8. Select everything. Place them in a group. Name it by library. Duplicate two more. Create a rectangle of the same size as the rectangle. Set 30 to corner radius. Duplicate and place on top of the other layout. Hide the other layer. Select the three rectangles and the small rectangle. Click on subtract. We must flatten so all the rectangles becomes one layer. Now click on the eye icon to see the other layers. We will click on the two points. Set four on the corner radius. Repeat the same process. Select the rectangle. Go to edit mode. We will select the points. Press shift and press two times the left arrow on your keyboard. You have moved 20 pixels to the left. Add border. Choose the color white. You have options here outside, center or inside. Select outside. Reduce the opacity to 10. Let's go in the symbol again. Bring the selected layout and replace it. Now select the layout. Go to the override section. It's time to change the text and change the icon. Now take the small layout. The spacing from the side menu is 24. Duplicate slide more. Select all the layouts. Set 16 on the spacing between elements. This time, bring the large layout. Duplicate 3 more. Select all the layouts. The spacing is 16 between elements. With the ruler, add a red line. Select all the small layouts. And extend to the red line. Create a rectangle of 299 by 1080. 
This is going to be for the right menu. Fill with the color black. Reduce the opacity to 30%. We're going to design it after. Press on T, we're going to add a title. Type favorite artists. Select auto width. Choose subtitle style for desktop. You can see that I choose the body one, but it's a mistake. I will fix it after. We're going to create a line of 841 for the separator. Remove the decimal number. Fill with the color white. Reduce the opacity to 10. Select the title and the separator. Duplicate. The spacing is 16. Change the title to recommend it for you. Now let's group every category together. Let's do a clean up in the layer. Group everything in the side menu and name all the layer. Go to symbol, bring the search file that place it at the top. Create a rectangle of 889 by 64. Fill with the color black. Reduce the opacity to 10. Bring top navigation. Align with the search field and stop where is the red line. Take the search field and place it next to the top navigation. Bring top right navigation. Place it at the top right corner. Let's redo the spacing. It's going to be 8 so everything can fit in the content. You can also find the symbol in the search field. Search for top card. We need space and going to move the other layout at the bottom. Press on T. Add a title. Type Discover. Choose the title text style. Select the text. The spacing is going to be 32 from the top navigation. Select the top card. Spacing is 24. Select the other group and the spacing is 32. Press on R. Create a rectangle of 412 by 215. Fill with color black. Reduce opacity to 30. Add border. Choose linear. First color is white 10%. At the bottom is black 0%. Go to independent corner. Set 20 on the top right and left corner. Press on T. Write billboard top 100. Choose subtitle style. Now, I finally noticed my mistake. Copy the text style and pass style to the other subtitle. Go to search. Search for list layout. The spacing is 16. Expand the width size to 380. Duplicate 3 more. The spacing is 8. Group everything and name the layer. Duplicate the group. Let's jump into the right side. Bring the now playing symbol. Place it at the bottom. Then bring the friend layout. Duplicate three more. Spacing is eight. Now press on T right friend activity. Choose body one style. Align with the top right navigation. Duplicate and write 320 friends. Choose body two style. 
we have some space, so we're going to duplicate another friend layout. It's time to change all the content. We are done with our desktop. In the next section, we will explore prototype interactions. Prototyping lets you preview your designs and navigate between artboards with animated interactions. With features like overlays, scrolling, and fixed elements, you can make your designs feel like the real experience with no coding required. Start points let you choose which artboard your prototype starts with. When you preview it, to set a start point, select the artboard you want to start and click on the Set as Prototype Start Point checkbox. You can also set a starting point by opening your prototype. Click on the flag icon. Scrolling enables you to navigate to your content vertically. This feature is handy when you have a large amount of information to display. To create a scrolling prototype that will scroll vertically, you have to increase the height of your artboard and add extra content that will scroll within the viewport. Click on play to preview your prototype. The status bar and the tab bar scroll too. We have to fix those elements. Click on the status bar and click on fixed element. We have to place the status bar at the bottom of the artboard. Then click on fixed element. Click on play to preview it. Here is another example with a desktop design. You have to fix the side menu and the right menu. Let's create interaction. Select a layer or artboard. Click on create interaction. Or you can click on the plus icon and drag to another artboard. Then you will see the animation option. You have several options for animating your artboard from the left, right, bottom, and top. The most common types of navigation in the user interface are push and model. Push navigation is when a new screen is pushed onto the navigation stack while the previous screen is still visible behind it. The user can go back to the previous screen by tapping the back button. For this type of navigation, you must choose to animate your artboard from the right. We can do the scrolling for this screen too, by repeating the same process that we did earlier. You can see the background color is moving too, if you want it to stay in place. You must fix it too. Select the background group layer and click on fixed element. Now click on play to preview it. Or you can remove the background color. Model navigation is when a new screen or view is displayed on top of the current one, usually in a separate window or dialog box. To return to the previous screen, the user has to tap a cancel or done button. For this type of navigation, you must choose to animate your artboard from the bottom to the top. In this example, I select the button and drag the arrow to the playlist. You will see a copy of your layer in orange. And you will see that the playlist is in another artboard a little further. Select the copy of your layer and place it where you want it to appear. Then, we're going to choose Animate from the bottom. Click on the Play icon to preview it. Of course, this is just a quick example. You now have a better understanding of prototyping, such as how to implement scrolling and select the appropriate animation for improved navigation for your app or web. I will show you more about overlay in the next section. In this last section, we're going to talk about overlay with more details. Previously, I showed you the basics, such as scrolling and some animations. You can create interaction using the link and hotspot. Link allows you to create a connection between two artboards. To remove the interaction, click on the play icon, drag and release, or you can just click on the icon here. A hotspot is a tappable area that links to artboards, but is not defined by the size of a specific layer, such as a button. This is the hotspot that I want to create interaction, and I want to go to another artboard. The hotspot is this tappable area, and when you tap on it, it appears up here. Now, let's go back to our first prototype. Duplicate the music player and bring it here. In the playlist, we have the tab bar and the current player. We're going to group them together and name it by tab bar. I want the tab bar to appear from the bottom when we play a music. We're going to use overlay and hotspot. First, we have to put the tab bar at the bottom. Go to prototype mode and we're going to create an interaction. 
so click on the play button and drag to the tab bar. You will see another artboard of your tab bar a little further. Then you will see a copy of your tab bar in orange. We're going to take the copy and place it at the bottom of the artboard. Click on the play to preview it. Let's talk about overlay options. Number one is Align Relative to. It lets you choose where the artboard will appear. You can choose between screen and layer. The screen always appears at the same position, determined by the horizontal and vertical offset. Layer appears in a position relative to the layer targeting. Number two is Offset. It is the distance between a link or hotspot starting and ending points in a prototype. Number three is Close Existing Overlays. Check this option to close all other active overlays. Number 4 is Reset Overlay Position. Number 5 is Use Overlay Position for all interactions to this artboard. It will push the settings from this target to override the default values. Number 6, you can use the layout's preview controls to specify the exact position of an offset. Now, what we're going to do is create an interaction that allows you to tap on the tab bar and it will expand and go to another page. Select the tab bar and drag the arrow to the music player screen. For the animation, we're going to select from the bottom. Click on the artboard you want to preview in the preview prototype. Let's create another interaction that allows the user to return to the playlist. Select the arrow down icon and drag to the playlist screen. We should choose none for the animation. But I will show you what happens when we select from the top. Technically, if we want to go back down, we just have to select Animate from the top, but it doesn't work as expected. Now we're going to select None. You can see it's pretty much better. I created this screen to show a quick example for the Lyric button. Select the Lyric button and drag to the Lyric screen. Select Animate from the bottom. Place your Lyric screen. We're going to create another interaction to go back to the music player screen. Select the arrow down and drag to the music player screen. Again, choose none for the animation. Prototyping is one of the best ways to communicate and understand your design idea effectively. Interaction and overlays allow designers to create interactive prototypes and test user interactions before development. These features help designers improve their workflow and create more interactive and user-centric designs.